Let me get something to de smudge this here camera. Day one, day one to everybody who is here. All right. Whoa. Day one, day one. All right. There we go. Aha, way, wow, way better. <laughs> day one, day one, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. We are going to start once we get 15 people in here. Um, don't make me say 22. I'm feeling really good today. We're going to begin once we get 15 people in here. Right now we have two people who have not hit the like button for some reason. I don't know who you two are. I appreciate you guys for being very early. I don't know who you three are now. I appreciate you for being very early. But if you can go ahead and hit, hit the like button, you got to hit the like button. That is our tradition in with this Medicine Shell movement. Today, <clears throat> I'm going to be discussing the ilu. Uh, it's a very popular ilu. Giri giri bu ugu eze. Giri giri bu ugu eze. Giddy giddy is the ugu of the eze, right? <laughs> I'll be explaining what this means, um, how this applies to life and everything. I see Calvin Baker in the house. Kedu wanne, kedu kedu. I'm on time this time, person. And there, well, of course, Snapple and Cats. And there, well, I already know Snapple and Cats hit the like button. I don't even need to say anything. SC, and there, well, Anyangu, Tutsu. I see, I see those sons. And there, well, one, and there, well, and there, well. Um, who else is here? I, I got seven people in here. If you're new, go ahead and let your name be known. What does Kedu mean? Kedu means uh, what's up. It literally means what's up, right? Um, it is a, a greeting in Igbo, but it is a casual greeting. It is slang. You don't say Kedu to your elders, right? That kind of thing. Um, I have, I, I'm sure you know this, but I have an Igbo language school called Kedu, Kedu.me. And the reason I called it Kedu is because when you know our ancestors say that um uh what's the ilu our ancestors say that uh um a, a smith who wants to form an ogene who doesn't know how to form an ogene should look at the tail of the falcon right or the hawk so the tail of the falcon or the hawk is kind of you know shaped like this and the ogene is also shaped like this what does that mean i mean i'm kind of giving you guys the juice early but um what does that mean it means that you you what you don't know um, terrestrially, you can learn from nature. Nature can teach you, right? One and the, the, the nature can give you the wisdom, right? That type of thing. So why is it called Kedu? I took a look and saw um, when I was putting the language school together that language is not really taught from teacher to student, which is why my three years of Spanish didn't go anywhere. And language isn't really taught from parent to child either, right? Language is actually taught from peer to peer. So I decided to call the school Kedu because we are going to be replicating the peer to peer model of language learning, meaning that you have somebody who is your peer that calls you on the phone as one of the things that comes with the school and you guys have conversations. You will learn a lot faster speaking to your peer than you will speaking to an elder or someone you see as a teacher or things like that. Um, so those of you who signed up for Kedu, when your coach calls, pick up the phone. That's the main, main, main thing in there. I'm here for the jollof rice. He said, no, we're doing Apple today. Yeah, so um, that's why it's called Kedu. Kedu is, is hello um, or it's what's up, right? Um, 15 people already. Damn. I'll do my. He said. All right, we're at 15 people. For some reason, we have eight likes, right? So let's go ahead and get the likes up. Let's go ahead and get the likes up. We're going to go ahead and begin, as I said. My UFO is right here. Quick question before we get started. Ah, there's no questions before we get started. I'm going to do the OG first, then we'll go to the quick question. <laughs> In school, they teach language, explain some guess. But that's not how language is learned naturally and efficiently. Yes, language is, it goes from peer to peer. That's why you sound like your friends. You don't sound like your parents or your parents' friends. You understand? There's a reason you sound more like your friends than you do your parents or your siblings and things like that. So again, we, our model for Kedu, for teaching the Igbo language is watching how a baby learns language. The way that if you want to form an Ogene, you watch the tail of the hawk. I'm looking at nature and seeing, okay, what's the most effective language learning program in the world? The most effective language learning program in the world is being a baby. All right, let's simulate that situation. We're not going to do the Western, uh, um, uh, uh, this is the pronoun. This is, the, we're not doing that, I can do. Three months, people are speaking Igbo. Three months, everybody, 
every everybody it, within three months they're speaking evil it works okay Adama. let's go ahead and begin Oji njinaka bu oji ndiche. Oya ka iji ne ekelekwe ndiche ai. Na okikeke ai. Na alawala. Na ndieke ndiorie. Ndi afo na ndi nkwo. Ndi mbu na ndi egede. Ndi madu na ndi mwo. Mana iji. Ofo. Nogu. Aga. Obu ike. Ije noku. Ka iji. Aga. Obu, obi, ndieze, kaiji, aga. Utuwa kwa kade, neke, nurie, na afo, na mkwo, ise. Alright. Guys, how's my audio, by the way? How's my audio? I'm trying to, um, I bought a microphone, like a big fancy microphone. I'm trying to get it to work with this so that the audio sounds a little better, but you guys let me know how the audio is sounding. Babies learn language by copying their parents. Babies learn language by copying their parents, yes. But then once you get them around their peers, you see something else. This is why the second child tends to learn language faster than the first child. You understand? You can learn language listening to audiobooks. You can learn it any way. But what works best is having a child around their peers. I hear you okay. Hey, chief. Chief. Naja Chinyere, Njokweri One of Every Kingdom. I greet you. Um, yeah, so having a child around their peers, the, the, the learning is faster than having it around a teacher or having it around parents. But you can learn, you can learn language by, by from anything. Yes. There's an Indonesian rapper I've heard learn uh, English by watching friends. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my first live session. Glad to be here. And they will one and they will. Okay, so somebody had a quick question. Let me see if I can find that quick question. Uh, where's all right? Quick question before we get started. Is there any evidence that Odinani has been the basis for a martial arts? Ah, some kung fu is based on Taoist Taoism practices and even capoeira is based on congo uh cosmology i appreciate that i guarantee it i guarantee it i just happen to not know at the moment but i am scratching and searching one of the things that when the europeans came they what they did was they 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 aimed to destroy the things that had a martial nature right things that could be used against them so a lot of the martial arts, a lot of the combat techniques, a lot of the weapon making techniques are the things that were buried, people were arrested for participating in, um, evidence of was destroyed, right? The things that um, give military power. And so those things are harder to find or harder to uncover than other things, right? So I am currently searching for um, different martial arts and so forth. I have been made aware of one, but I have not seen it. I just know that it exists, it has a name, and it is still semi-active in a specific place. So I'm going to be reaching out to see um, what that is. I got a weird message from somebody. We're just going to check that. But yeah, so um, as far as martial arts, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I just don't know enough to speak um, on it. And I usually want to confirm things in two places before I start opening my mouth. So I'll do my, I'll do my, so let me say this with you. Yes, of course, Carmelos. <laughs> Hold on, wait. of course, LOL. I'm live right now. A good friend of mine just messaged me with the link to this live and goes, is this you? <laughs> like, what are you looking at me, right? I would assume. Uh, <laughs> I'll do my... All right, let's go ahead and begin. So the the topic for today is Gidi Gidi Bu. Ugweze. Gidi Gidi Bu. Ugweze. Um, the, I was first made aware of the proverb by Oliver de Kokwe. Um, he has a song called Nuku Maun. 
Um, and actually, my I have a documentary on high life music that's coming out. Came up on my YouTube feed. Oh, shout out to YouTube! So I have a documentary on high life music. I've posted part one. Um, part two is going to be coming out in the next few days. I'm going to do the whole the whole thing just all together, and it's really the history of Igbo people from like a little bit before colonial till now and how music plays in that and that kind of thing and all that stuff like the history of our music um and uh oliver de Kokwe is off ob obviously plays a big part in that and he's the one who made me aware of the the line giddy giddy boo is it giddy giddy boo is it right now what does this mean this means that it, and the reason i want to make this live let me say this first is because this gets misinterpreted a lot right this gets misinterpreted. I've read different meanings as to what it means and things like that. And I've, I have I wanted to share what it actually means. So those of you who um, already speak Igbo and already familiar with the culture, of course, you've probably heard this before. And you've probably heard more than one translation for this particular thing, right? So we're going to go piece by piece and explain it. I'm going to use this to explain how our ancestors view greatness or being a king or being an exalted person within the society that you're in, right? So let me go ahead and begin. So the line is gidi gidi bu ugu is gidi gidi bu ugu is What is gidi gidi, right? The Igbo language is really interesting because um first and foremost, most things are based off of a verb, right? Every word no every 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 word is a is a, a conjugated verb, right? Um, because as it is said, our ancestors see the world as, as a world of actions rather than a world or uh, yeah, a world of action rather than a world of things, right? Things are typically named after what they do or their action property. You understand? But then there's another element of the language where onomatopoeia is a big part of it, right? So words will do what they're supposed to represent sometimes. And it will be hard then to translate that word into English because English doesn't really have that feature. So we run into the word giddy giddy. And I think this is where it gets mixed up, right? We're all very aware that giddy giddy is commotion. It's some type of commotion. It's it's the, the sound represents the movement of feet, giddy giddy, right? A bunch of stampede, a riot, a commotion, that kind of thing. But a good one, a good one, giddy giddy, right? A good commotion, not like a not like a like a good chaos, you understand, right? So giddy giddy, that's that word right there is some type of commotion, some type of stampede, some type of rushing. This this is it's just the, the the a multitude of feet moving, you understand? Boo is right, B U is giddy giddy boo ugu, ugu. So then this is the part that really mixes people up. What is ugu? Most people know that ugu is some type of respect, honor dignity measurement something like that Ugu, right very similar to the word for mountain i'm not good with tones so i can't <laughs> they sound the same they're gonna come the same they're gonna come out of my mouth the exact same way but mountain is also Ugu. Ugu is the measure of a person you understand it is the measure of a person. If a person has ugu, they are a person of measure. Either they are a person of great achievement, they are a person that we look at, they play the role of a mountain amongst people. So the, the average person is a hill, this individual is a mountain. Ugu, it is a person of great measure, a great measure, right? Or But ugu by itself is, of course, like measure. And then that's how it gets translated into honor, respect, dignity, just... The, 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 the your your grace your, your power that kind of thing right so ugu and then is 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 another one what you'll come to find the reason that it's hard to just say this means that is because the way Igbo works is is almost opposite of english where in english words get more and more specific so every single thing has a word for it in Igbo, one word does a lot of different things Right. So a word is valuable based on the amount it can do rather than a very specific narrow thing. So which is why trying like when you say it in Igbo, we all know what you're saying. But then when you try to say it back in English, it's like uh, it's, it's hard to say or it loses its its gravity like it's uh, it's ugu, right. And so is it is it gets translated as king a lot, which is fine. That makes sense. You understand. But an is it is an a, a, a an exalted person. 
right? The word is it goes back to the idea of separation, a person who is separated from the crowd. And if you look throughout um, specifically like coastal West Africa, anybody who is considered the is it of their community, there is a degree of separation. This person does not eat with morals, right? This person does not do mundane things with people. They can't be seen eating. They can't be seen doing any uh, bodily human function, that kind of thing. Um, there's a separation thing. It is also the word eze. And then you see nze. All of them are related. You understand? So girigiribu eze literally means that the stampede is the measure of a king. We'll call it king, right? The stampede is the measure of a king. Now, what does that mean on top of the meaning that um, I already gave it, right? It means this, that no matter who sits on the throne, no matter who has a crown, no matter what title people answer, when a real king emerges, the people will know. If somebody calls themselves a leader, and another person does not call themselves a leader, but the people rush to the person who doesn't call themselves the leader, regardless of what they refer to themselves at, the people know who their leader is. You understand? So in Igbo culture um, and in our ancestral culture, oftentimes there are titles that are, uh, uh, that are given for a person's awful, Right now, what is your awful? Your awful is, um, or your iua. Your iua is what you come into creation with, what you come into existence with. Um, when you are being reincarnated, there is a phase in reincarnation where you and your chi um, make a negotiation with the universe, and you and your chi tell the universe, "We are coming into the world to be this, to do this, to actualize this reality." And the universe says, if you are coming into me to do these things, here are my rules. You're going to do this. You're going to not do this. You're not going to do this, so on and so forth. And you receive your awful. This is your mandate to go ahead and be and do that thing you agreed to be and do, which is kept if you make sure, which is kept if you make sure to um, follow those rules, right? So when you have this awful, this all fault is your existential truth. This is who and what you are on an existential level. It cannot be taken away from you. You can forfeit it, but it cannot be taken away from you, right? And sometimes people will know this before you know it, right? People will know these things before you know it. So you may not have the title. You may not have the whatever, but for some reason, when this person speaks, that's who we listen to. That person is the real king. This, the stampede. Right. There's another ilu that says, um, um, maduobola giofo mana ofoma onye gia maduobola giofo mana ofoma onye gia. All types of people hold the ofo, all types of pope people hold the ofo, but the ofo knows who really owns it. Right. We can all hold the awful. We can all say we have the authority and the power and so on and so forth. But authority itself, power itself, all these different things, greatness, success, achievement. So on all these things, we use titles to exclaim to the world and say, I am this. We have that. All of those things know who it belongs to. Right. Who actually is supposed to hold it. You understand. Um and this theme is something that recurs in a lot of African storytelling. It is one of the core tenets in African storytelling. If you want to go to the comedic story of um, Set and Horus, um, very similar. If you want to go to Mali and go to the story of Sundiata, the Lion King. If anybody tells me the Lion King is, is Hamlet, I'll, you and I will physically fight. I'll, 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 I'll go in a holding cell. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm so tired of hearing that. Lion King is specifically from Mali. It's not from Hamlet. You understand? And so if you go to the story of uh, uh, um, Sundiata, the Lion King, um, the story there, or what we now know as the Lion King. In fact, let's just do the Lion King so we're familiar, right? The story is that Scar used his force and his cunning and his manipulation to take 
the awful of Simba, that the universe gave Simba this awful. He is the king, actually from Mufasa, right? Took it from Mufasa, killed Mufasa. Scar then used force to hold the awful. And it was only a matter of time that the sun returned back to noon or back to its highest point or the awful return back to its natural place so simba gets cast away he's trying to live as a warthog um nala comes and says you're not a warthog you're a king simba goes no i'm not a king or something like that simba then for some reason i can't remember accepts his mission he comes back he takes the thing from scar he fights scar he wins that is the story of awful that is the story of all four. And when Simba arose, giddy giddy, boo right? All four ma onye jia. The all four knew who the real king was, and that is why he won, right? If you have all four in something, you'll always win. If you have all four in something, you'll always win. There could only be temporary setbacks, right? Nigerians, uh, I'll say Nigerians because they all say it. Nigerians say uh, uh, destiny can be delayed, but it can't be changed. There can be setbacks, right? Scar can come and throw you off Pride Rock. But the as, as there is gravity in the world, the force of justice has a restorative nature. And justice and gravity are equal parts of, of existence, right? And that justification act that gravity does will bring you back into your position. So titles are nice. Crowns are nice. Oh, I'm the blank, blank, blank of this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a CEO. I'm a mogul. I'm an entrepreneur, all this stuff. But gidi gidi bu ugu eze, right? The people will know who you are because the all fault knows who it belongs to. That kind of thing. Right. Um, the reason I want to have discussion, I seen somebody I won't say, I mean, I'm not going to say names. You guys don't know the person, but somebody was complaining that they took a title and um, people uh, they took a They're a young person, but they took a title. But uh, uh, I think an also title, My, an also title. Somebody who is an also is theoretically supposed to be respected in a certain way. Right. So there's a certain way you talk to them. There's a certain way you act around them. This person is somebody who has told you that they are. Um, going to embody the greatness of their chi on earth. You understand? They're going to also be a living ancestor. And in that regard, they are treated like a living ancestor by taking that title. But people were so treating this person like they were a kid, right? Um, and it goes back to this particular thing because the individual is upset that I took this title and you're acting like this, right? But it goes back to the original thing that that respect that is given to the also title, it's not the title that gets the respect. It's the person. You understand? It's the person. By the time you take the title, people should have already been treating you like an also. People should have already been seeing you in the light of an also. From there, you take the title to, I don't know, make it official. Right. There is. I was um, I myself, I'm interested in the Inze title in my community. And I spoke to the head of the society there. And I said, is there like a training or something you do um, to become an Inze? And he said that, no, no, no. If you, if you say you're an Inze, you're an Inze. You understand? If you say you're an Inze, you're already an Inze. And the title is not the main thing. It's not the important thing, right? That kind of thing. So, gidi gidi bu ugu eze. Um, there are titles in this world. And our ancestors believe that they are existential to people. There are truths in this world, and our ancestors believe they are existential to people, right? You don't necessarily need to put in any type of extraordinary human efforts to prove to the world what you are. The world already knows what you are, one. And then two, all forma onye jia, right? All forma onye jia. The awful knows who really holds it. That kind of thing. So, all right, let's take a look at the questions. Damn, y'all going off. El Mayo about the Lion King. Lion King is from Hamlet. Hey, ha, ha, ha. You and I, man, when I see you, man. <laughs> when I see you, man. No, nah, talk about the Lion King is from Hamlet. Hey, man. <laughs> it's insane. It's even to the point where, like, 
the woman in the uh, Sun Diata, the Lion King, and this is again way before Hamlet. The woman, or I'm sorry, the Rafiki character was a woman referred to as the baboon woman, right? And she was what we would call an is and why or a devia. You understand that 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 Rafiki character, right? That Zazu that runs around screaming stuff runs. Go there. I have a video called the uh, about the Hornbill. I'm gonna type the word Hornbill. Just search horn. I can't remember. I never remember my titles. Type in horn bill medicine shell, right? From throughout Africa, the one one of the things that holds us together as oh not holds us together because I wouldn't say we're together, but one of the things that you will see that's fairly universal is the story of this horn bill, the horn bill, the bird, right? And this particular bird, um. Is the bird is the messenger of Chuku, right? So Chuku gives this bird a message, sends the Chuku uh, the bird into creation. I don't want to retell the story. I type just type hornbill medicine shell and see the video. Sends the, the message. So it was interesting when I was looking at I was researching this particular story. I saw all the way in Ivory Coast they had a mask of a hornbill with two other hornbills on its head. The story is that the hornbill carried its parents into creation when everything was dark. And when, um, what was it, his parents, and then both parents died on the hornbill's head. And since there was no solid ground to bury the hornbill, the hornbill opened its own head and buried its parents inside of its own head, right? And so I saw this in Ivory Coast. I saw this in Guinea, the same mask. I saw this, of course, in Igbo land. I saw these in all these different places. I was like, oh, this is interesting, right? And so then now you have a similar bird, Zazu, that flies around. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And then when the parents died, it started crying. Ah, and then from there, a bunch of stuff happened. Just check the story on the thing. But that Zazu character, that's that's who that is. That's what that is. It's the messenger, flies around, loud mouth, yells, that kind of thing. That's the hornbill. Like, I mean, it's, it's so blatantly African that, like, they can't like now they have to do like the Lion King, the live Lion King. They're all black. Like they're getting mad. And <laughs> they know why they're doing that. You know, <laughs> I'm talking about Hamlet. But yeah, uh, yeah okay, so he's like, I don't know what y'all laughing about. I'm dead ass serious. Now, hold on. Uh, there was a lot of environmental troubles, famines too. Yes, there was a lot of environment in the Lion King. A lot of environmental troubles and a lot of famine and all those different things. Right. All these different things. It's a story about the awful. That's what the story is about. A story about the awful. It is a story and the awful is in alignment with the nature of the sun. Of the sun. Right? And no matter what you're doing on earth, the sun, from the perspective of somebody standing on earth, is going to do what the sun does every single year, every single day. Right? That's what the awful is about. Right? There's an ilu that says... Um, you can't use your hands to cover a pregnancy, right? The things that nature, the, the things that are of nature, they are beyond, they're bigger than the human will, right? And no matter what you try to do with your hands, that stomach is going to show. I think uh, Baba Dick Gregory uh, once said that once a woman goes into labor, there's no force on earth that can put that child back in, right? All these things are the stories about the awful. That's what's being referred to as the awful. These truths, these truths that hold nature together. And there are many, and you are a holder of a specific set that is very specific to you. And the journey of life, Ijawele, is the journey of figuring out what your particular attributes are as far as the awful goes. So, Odemma, Odemma. Uh, your obsession with this Lion King Sun connection is hilarious. The passion. Yeah, oh, man, it's just... It's just theft <laughs> you can tell the story you can make your cartoon just don't lie to me talking about hamlet don't lie to me that's not hamlet you know you know it's not hamlet you know yeah and that reminds me of naruto he wanted to become okay it reminds me of naruto you know it's funny i don't know um rude mechanicals i don't know if you're a patron but we have a group study like twice twice a month and the way Naruto, it, not as much anymore, but the way Naruto used to come up, Naruto and Avatar, the way they used to come up just all up and I haven't seen either of them. I tapped out, anime wise, I tapped out at Dragon Ball Z, right? But um, the way Naruto and Avatar keep popping up, you know, it's, it's really interesting. But anyways, reminds me of Naruto. He wanted to become um, Hokage to gain the respect from the villagers, but um, Itachi 
told him that only when he was respected, when he has the respect of the people, can he become the Hulk. Um, Hokage, exactly, yes. Um, the highest title, so the Azot title, I'll make an entire video on it, but if you've seen my Inze Explained video, it's a very similar thing. The Azot title has levels, right? So there's different levels you can attain within that. So you take on that title, you become a part of the organization, and then there's higher and higher levels you can reach. The highest level is referred to as Oha, Oha, O-H-A. And no human being can ever take the title of Oha. Oha means the people, right? The people. So the highest title holder in the Oza system is the Oha. And every Oza, everybody who has the Oza title is beholden to the respect and the consent and the guidance by from the people, right? That kind of thing. It's all Dimma. Could it be Dragon Ball Z? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that means. Amazing how this one concept is across all cultures. Yeah, that that Hornbill one is amazing, right? Yeah, it's it's everywhere. Avatar: the Last Airbender is amazing. Uh, great kids show. I try to get too into it, but it's too late. I'm too old. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's not gonna work for me. It's too late, you know. But uh, it looks good. It looks good. Maybe my kids will be interested and they'll watch it, and I'll watch it through them. Uh, but yeah, I, I like I said, I tapped out at Dragon Ball Z. Um, I couldn't do it. I don't, I don't yeah, I can, yeah, but yeah. And dry, in fact, I tapped out in the Cell Saga for anybody who knows Dragon Ball Z. I couldn't even do the Boo Saga. I, <laughs> I wish we could all watch the Lion King together and go over the African roots of it. Maybe I'll make a video, Snapple and Cats. I made one, I remember I went to go watch that, the newer Spider-Man movie, and I kept seeing all these different themes, um, from like, uh, that uh, reminded me of things in Odinani. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is, this is cool. I'm gonna talk about this. So I went and did that. So maybe I can do one for the Lion King too. You know, let me know if you wanna watch it. Uh, I'm watching My Hero Academia. Okay, that's what I've been told that one's good. I've been told that uh, One Piece, anybody seen One Piece? Uh, my brother in law swears by One Piece that if I watch One Piece, I'll get back into anime. It takes time to get into this and this and that. So one day, one day, one day. Despite exaggeration, a lot of anime has spiritual concepts strongly in the background and those powers. Yeah, yeah. No, the Japanese do a good job of infusing their um, or using anime to communicate their worldview, their cosmology, things like or their take on cosmology and things like that. So yeah, of course. Yeah, anime has all types of it. You know that kind of thing. I can do a whole rundown about. The, the same Dragon Ball Z I've been talking about since the beginning, you know, about how it ties into things like the Ikenga and all these different things, right? That type of thing. So, happy Black History Month, uh, Matifi. Happy Black History Month, my, my friend. Matifi, what time is it over there? I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> cool. Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood in particular. Dope. Uh, okay, we've, got, we've gone straight anime in the comments. I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, that would make... For some cool videos any video you guys want to see just put it in a comment um i don't know about this little live comment because i can't search them for some reason put it in the comment of any video what i do when i'm making my videos i'll go and look at all like you can just check all the comments and then i'll have the patrons vote on what everybody's asking for so if you're not a patron or if you're a patron just message me but um if you're not a patron just put it there i can do a video on it and we can go into different movies different shows things like that um, I think it's always good to a good way to explain things. Plus, I infuse these things in the videos already. So, uh, last week's video you mentioned all Igbo coming from Africa was made up. Uh, what is the actual origin story of the Igbo people? Uh, da, 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 da. I think Igbo people ha are too old for our story to be a we came from here story. I think they are entirely too old as an ethnic group. To be a we came from here story any era of human existence there is a massive artifact record in Igbo land that says people were there at that time right you can go to any era i'm talking about the ice age from the romans and all that stuff so if we're telling our story the reason i think one of the reasons history gets always told us we came from here we came from here is because i think we're 
copying the tradition of the uh, Indo-European people, right? And their history is a recent migration history. Within the last 600 years or 6,000 years, we arrived in this place. So yeah, and then we came from here and you can trace it and all these words came from here and here, right? But before human beings left Africa, there are artifacts. If you look up Uguele, I'm going to put it here because I don't know why this place doesn't get the highlight it does. Uguele, Utsu. Right. If you go to the Uguele Uturu artifacts, they are from, I'm going to just off the top of my head, I want to say about 90,000 years ago. And I could say that, okay, this is probably from a different people or this is from maybe the people who were here before us, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of those, that artifact ties into the stories that you hear about Nechuku or Neka. Right. It taught when there was in my community, Somebody had lost their offal, and I'm not from Uguele, I'm not from Utu, but in order for them to reactivate their offal, they had to go to the people we refer to now as the Osu, and those Osu people had to go to Uguele and get a silver ring, and that silver ring was kept in the bag that the offal is kept in. Now, if you know what an offal is and what it means, so on and so forth, that act of going to Ahia, um, Ahia Ele, the market of Ele, and getting that ring signifies something very interesting, right? So again, 90,000 years ago, and then it all is backed with what's going on in the culture. So it's very hard to say this one can't, it's like, I, I, I see it as who else came from this place, right? Who else came from this place? Of course, you get into your Israel people. Like, <laughs> you get into people who are into the Israel thing, right? Um, which isn't true. Um, but like, you know, there's, there, there are pots in Igbo land older than human life in Israel. You understand, right? Just, just Emo state alone is more populous than the current Israel, right? If we were from, I don't know how the hell that many people. So just stuff like that. So, um, where do Igbo people come from? Igbo people, like many Igbo villages will tell you they came from the ground. <laughs> They came from the ground. So Igbo people were too old. Yeah, way too old to be tracing origins. Way too old, you know. Uh, it, 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 it's, and I, I know what I'm saying. I know why I'm saying what I'm saying. You understand? It's, again, it's, if we, we're, how far back are we going? We go back 2,000 years. Okay, there's evidence that we were here. 3,000, 4,000 years. There's evidence we were still here. Or somebody was here. And who else would it be? There's, I, if I go back to the time of the woolly mammoth, there's things that show that a lot of, not just like a pot here and there, but masses of, of evidence of things, right? Whenever Europeans uh, uh, come in and they do like an archaeological dig in Oibo land, they always see something and they pack up and leave, right? <laughs> I remember in the 90s when Egyptology was real big, and I think they dug a little too far and they're like, okay, yeah, we're good on this. And they just left and it's, it hasn't been a thing since, right? That kind of thing. So yeah, whenever them things happen, they run away. You just know that, you know, maybe this is, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye, one. And then, um, yeah, it was just too old to be talking about where we're from, right? Way too old to be talking about where we're from, that kind of thing. Hey, El, the Canaanite God uh, became the most high, Uguenle. Uh, who else would it be? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it was Uchi's origins. Yes, 250K, 200, okay, I said 90,000, I'm wrong. 250,000 years old. 250,000 years old. If, if anybody that has a good timeline of history knows that at this point, we have to stop talking about where we're from. They're just, okay, that's just not, is we're from here. You know what I mean? Where else? Where else? You understand? Are you you waiting for to find the one that's four hundred and fifty thousand years old or whatever two million years? That's the one you're waiting for. Okay, that's where they're from. No, they. You understand? And it's not that there was one spear. That thousands of broken spears, thousands. And in that same site, the pro, the pro, the folklore, the story is that the um, original Chuku shrine was a tree in that area, a tree or a cave, I can't remember. And when you would go to that Chuku shrine, she would give you a spear. I'm gonna be I'm gonna tell you some things that are gonna shake. I'm gonna tell you some things that maybe you shouldn't know, by the way. 
uh, they'll probably shut my stream down in a minute. So when you go talk to, when you go to the tree or cave named Chuku or Ne Chuku specifically or Neka, you talk to her. Whoever spoke to her, she'd give them a spear. She would give them a spear. Now the story is. She did this for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And finally, one woman, or as time went, people's requests became more and more petty. And one woman went and said, hey, can you help me find my cooking pot to the Oracle? And the Oracle said, you know what, I'm done. And she got up and left. And she went to where she went to is debated. But the most popular take is she went to Arochuku. You understand? As you went to Arochuku. Different communities claim she's here, she's here, she's here, that kind of thing. But the most popular take, 9 out of 10 people will tell you she went to Arochuku. And that's where the Arochuku Long Juju Shrine, that's the story behind that particular one. Now, here's the thing. The 250-year-old thing they found were broken spears. There's a bunch of thousands, thousands millions maybe, of broken spears. The, as If you continuously dig into the earth, you'll find the further you dig... The, <laughs> Dig and you'll find, dig and you'll find, dig and you find. I think they dug, dug, dug. They got to a point like, all right, we're going to go home. This is <laughs> that kind of thing, right? That type, that type of thing. So the when you have that thing, again, and again, with my own two eyes, I saw that you in order to have your all fall restored, you have to get up from wherever you're at and go to that same place and get a silver ring that you're going to put in your bag. So at that point, I don't... Uh, it, it's not like a where are we from thing, you understand. Some Europeans are old, but not everyone there. Yes, yes, yes. I know that Europeans are of a mixed... There are many different origins for the different groups in Europe and that kind of thing, for sure. I, I met like the Indo, like the ones we're calling Indo-Europeans, you know. The ones that your boy was calling Aryans, you know. Ibini Upabi, exactly, from Drum of the Creator, he said... Uh, anyone else by uh, Europeans ever feel the need to dig? Yeah, shout out to Europeans. I mean, people always want to give them crap, but they... <laughs> Snap look as it, did anyone besides Europeans ever feel the need to dig? Shout out to them. Yeah, you know, thank. I'm glad they did that because now we know this, you know. Yeah, they, they, they left after that, but somebody should, I would assume, take over from there, right? Resources. Once I get the resource or once I'm in position, I will definitely look into that because there's a lot there, you know, but anybody who is in more position than me, go ahead and start. You've got my full support. I'll give you anything you need. That kind of thing. But yeah, shout out to Europeans. They did the work, you know, uh, <laughs> be in Niger for the first time next month. OK, we'll be in Niger for the first time next month. Where in emo should I explore? Um, It's hard to say. Uh, just go to your town, get to know your people, get to know your heritage, get to know what's going on there. Uh, I think your town, whatever town it is, is going to have more than enough to see and do um, culturally. And you'll find that that is a culture that matters most is yours, is your own. So go to your father's town and, you know, become a part of that situation. Um, after that, depends on what you're trying to see and do. Um, uh, Oguta is always a good visit for anybody that, you know, wants to just relax and have fun. The Oguta Lake, you'll get to see the two, there's a, there's a, a folklore about these two rivers that never meet. So they're side by side. If you go to Oguta Lake, one half is green, one half is brown. It's two different rivers that never intersect or cross. They just do this, right? That kind of thing. Um, Oguta is always cool. Oware is fun. Um, if you're talking about like anything Odinani related, just focus on your town, focus on your town. Everything else is, it's the same thing that is in your town replicated somewhere else for them. So go to your own and, and delve into your own and immerse yourself in your own, that kind of thing. So, um, no village is more Odinani than the other. So there's no like, oh, I'm going to go to the Mecca of Odinani. Your town is your Mecca. So, I'll so you are ancient people actually Igbo, yeah so exactly the word Igbo means ancient people exactly got it thank you definitely check out natural wonders for sure for sure for sure awesome 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 so yeah but um did anyone besides i think y'all i think we're running out of questions let me scroll up a little bit and see if anybody's got questions if we're out of questions then we're out of we're out of live 
um, your own. Da -da -da. Colin says, I actually just found out a few years back that Europeans are not old at all. And that really puts things, a lot of things in perspective. Yeah, European, the, the Europeans people typically talk about are not that old. Nobody's old compared to Africans, first of all. You understand? Nobody's old compared to Africans. But yeah, human beings came to Europe fairly late. I would say it goes Africa, Middle East, Asia, Middle East, Asia, kind of the same, and then Europe and North America, but Europe first, then North America, South America, allegedly, based on the records and the work that people have put in and uncovering it, right? So the current knowledge says that is the pattern that people use to spread to these different places. But it's hard to say that these people are old and these people aren't old because it's the same people, right? It's the same people. It's an African got up and went to Europe. He's not newer than his brother, who is still in Indice. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's not a new creation. <laughs> it is the same thing that just went like that, right? And then they, they just move in their different directions. So it's hard to say who's old, who's not old. But I'm saying that this specific thing we're calling Igbo culture, this specific collective of people have been there for a really long time, right? so long that asking where they came from is not the question we should be asking right it's not the question we should be asking it should be why here why so long and how so long right and how long and how long that kind of thing my opinion all right Trace origins just looked it up I just looked it up the oldest stonework Uguele 250,000 years yeah so Kingdom of Unri is the fourth wave of evil civilization. Hey, Nyrex, you sound like you know what you're saying. <laughs> Nyrex, you know, you sound like you know what you're saying. Yeah, Unri um, is likely from uh... Okay, so they have like a thing where they trace the the is Unri. And I think it goes to like the 1500s is the is, so it's kind of new. It's kind of new for an Igbo community. Um, but Nri, I think 1500s, but there's probably a chance it's much older. It just maybe there was a change in how they did things around that time, but it's probably much older than that. Um, yeah, so I kind of think. I actually want to do t Twitter spaces with you discussing Wakanda when Shuri sees Killmonger in the ancestor realm. Um, giving your talk about not rejecting your ancestors you don't like. Oh, Isabel, yeah, Isabel, anytime you're ready, just message me. <laughs> I think that'd be a cool discussion. Yeah, let's do that. I have to watch the movie first. I haven't watched it. So message me whenever you want to do it. Go ahead. One of the things I want to do this year is I want to collaborate with as many people as possible, um, especially people that have been supporting me since the beginning, right? People, names that I'm typically seeing in the lives, names I'm seeing in the comments of videos. And then, of course, Ndiyeze, the patrons, right? So anybody that wants to do anything together, just say, send me a message. I'm making it as easy as possible. So... All right. Uh, I wonder what we're doing. I wonder what we were doing in the Ice Age. No, actually, damn. I never heard anything about Africa in the Ice Age. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was happening. <laughs> it was happening. There's, there's a lot of evidence of, of uh, large scale human settlement from the time of the Ice Age in Africa. You know, there's a lot of evidence to that and that kind of thing. Um, going into a personal theory, I think a lot of what we're calling Igbo land was underwater. I think the, during that time, I think the Niger River probably ran wider during the time of the Green Sahara. If the Sahara is green, that means it's giving more water to the Niger. If it's giving more water to the Niger, that whole area is going to be flooded. Except the communities that were on hills, right? Ndugu, Ndugu. The people that were on top of hills and what our people call mountains, but they're really hills, that kind of thing. The high altitude. Now, why do I say this? Because all of these artifacts, Uguele, Utsuru, Leja, Opi, Nsuka, they're all high altitude communities. That is where you get the oldest stuff. And there's a lot of folk tales about the world being covered in water and then the people arriving to the land and making the, the water hard or making it... Uh, uh, dry earth, the earth drying, right? So the first world age, the water, the earth was muddy. The world was muddy. The world was watery and then it dried and solid earth was formed and people spread from the, 
from their hills to there. The um, the Unri story is the most popular one, right? They came to this place, or uh, Eri came from the sky, right? Very important to remember. Eri came from the sky. Eri, as an Eri rope, came from the sky, and he landed on a patch of earth. The rest of the world was water. And then he got, uh, Chuku gave him a smith, an iron smith from Oka, and brought him there and said, use your bellows to make the earth solid. The iron smith came, he made the earth solid, and from there, the Inri people began to live their life there. Also, the story of the hornbill that I told earlier. The reason the hornbill had to bury its parents in its head was because the earth was covered in water. There was no solid ground. So the only thing the hornbill found to rest on was an ube tree. An ube tree, right? Um, I think, I don't, anyways, I don't, don't need to translate it. The perch on there then started crying. Right, ube, 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 hence the name ube, you understand? But couldn't land on earth and couldn't um, bury her parents because there was everything was covered in water, right? So I think the Niger probably ran wider. I think that area was flooded. There's a dam that they opened in Cameroon. Every time they open in Cameroon, the whole lower Niger floods, right? And so, and so, and so um, yeah, I think it was all underwater and I think it, it, people probably settled on the hills this is ice age time the sahara um the sahara that desert area is greener and it's producing more water and the water runs off into the niger and of course then it's going to be more water volume but this is just my own thinking right um with time i'll be able to look into it and, and that kind of thing or if anybody's more in position to look into it look into it yeah my own theory so yeah, Um, what else are people saying? I'll make some cool videos. I think we're all out of questions, y'all. I think we are all out of questions. In terms of Igbo language, what's the most used dialect? Every, every family has its own. <laughs> I'm not, um, I'm not big on the, like, I don't like, people think that like dialect in Igbo is like a demarcation, like dialects are like marks of demarcation, but they're just, it's just an expression of geography. You know what I mean? So every town has its own dialect. Within the town, every side of town has its own dialect. When if the two rivers are between two people, they're gonna start sounding different from each other. That's all it is. Um, so there's no most spoken dialect in Igbo because the communities are like roughly equal size, and then they all have their own dialect. But then if you go to that town itself, you'll now see that there's dialects that have dialects within them. My own family, we have a dialect, right? We say loy loy. We don't say fufu. We don't say gari. We say loy loy. You understand? Just because my uncle said it one day and it was funny and everybody started saying it. And then from there, everybody says, oh, I'm eating loy loy, that kind of thing. So um, <laughs> that's how dialects work. Now, if you're not from my family, if you weren't there when the joke was made, you're going to still be saying fufu. In 200 years, we'll say, oh, this is the Ofar and what dialect. This is the whoever dialect. Ofar and what dialect. They say loy loy. These ones say fufu. It's just how language works. There's no most spoken dialect. But if there has to be one, there's, of course, going to be central Igbo. You can speak Central Igbo, you can communicate with everybody, you can hear everybody, that kind of thing. Or you can at least make sense out of all the other dialects um, if you speak Central Igbo. But Central Igbo doesn't belong to any specific group of people. It's just a, a, a combination. It's like a, it's like what's the, the common denominator between all these languages? Okay, let's, let's all speak that, you know. Um, and then, but Central borrows most from the Isu, what we can call the Isu dialect. Because um, it is said that Isu people are easier to hear across Igbo land. So somebody from the very edges of Igbo land are going to have a dialect that a lot of other people won't be able to understand. But Isu is right in the middle. And so being in the middle, you know, um, perhaps that's where the language spread from. Maybe you've had more intersecting of people. It's just like with America. Um, whenever uh, they hire you for the news, that they or the people they try to hire to, to announce the news are typically people from the Midwest because they have the most flat accent. I'm from the Midwest. They have the most, not that that's why I talk the way I talk, but um, they have the most flat, easy to understand access for everybody. If you get somebody from like way over in like Inglewood or way over in, in uh, uh, Boston, then now you're going to have problems, I kind of think. So uh, most common dialect is um, Central. 
I have some Basque ancestry and they've been there since forever or for forever. Uh, not everyone around there. Yeah, I know ba the Basque people are much, have been there longer than other Europeans and not necessarily related to them. And then I know that people from Hungary and Finland are from a very different genetic group than the other Europeans around them. Then also the Celts or people who are calling Celts now, the Scottish, the Irish, some French people, some what we're calling British, that kind of thing, um, and so forth. So yeah, Europe has a lot going on. We need a video on Akaraka. The video on Akaraka is coming. Yo, you guys have been very patient. Um, it has been very hard for me to do videos and teach a class at Kedu. So this next time around, I'm not teaching. I just got, I just hired somebody. I'm very excited about the person I hired. Some of you might already know him. Um, I'm not going to announce who it is yet, but some of you definitely already know him. Um, especially if you're part of this community, uh, because it, whenever my videos are floating around, his or some of his are recommended next to mine and so on and so forth. So, uh, some of you guys definitely know who he is, but he'll be teaching. Um, uh, we have to finish training before I start saying who it is, but, uh, he'll be teaching, um, Evo 1 and Evo 2 and I can rest and focus on my videos, but I'm doing a documentary. The next one that's coming out. It's a documentary on high life music. I already posted part one, part two is there. Even if you don't know what high life music is or you're not interested, just, just trust me on this one, right? Uh, the uh, last documentary I did was the Osu documentary. I've decided to do a documentary a year, right? So the 2020, what last year, what year was this? Whatever year we just passed, the documentary for it is a few days late, but it's it's coming. And then I'll do my Ekumeku one this current year, for this current year. So. Um, the High Life documentary is coming. And then from there, we're going back to the regular routine. Akaraka is coming next. Then I'm going to do, um, what's it? Uh, why can't I think? Afa, divination, something in my eye. Divination, after that, after divination, then it's whatever the patrons say. So I'll do my. Ay, Urena, one gadi, igeto, gobala itriaka, ogade no wa. Thank you, Urena, for the donation. Chi. Ha <laughs> Chief Chinga in joke where he says the moon. <laughs> he say, yeah, Chief Chinga, you sound like you've been doing your, your homework. That's one of the other origins that we came from the moon. I'll do my underwater now. Um, there were a giant lake in Libya during the Ice Age. Yeah, Africa was a very watery, temperate place. It was colder. Um, my good friend who's in here, Onyemobi, actually pointed out to me that a lot of these masquerades, and masquerades are, are typically depicting ancestors, ancestors or spirits, right? A lot of, or animals, a lot of these masquerades have what looks like winter gear on. They, that if you were to dress like this, you'd be pretty hot in Africa, right? So perhaps they're coming from a time where this area was a lot colder. It's good to wonder about. It's good to wonder about. I know the high altitude places in Nigeria get cold. Like people in Jaws wear coats in the winter and that kind of thing. Um, do you know what sign language is this in Igbo land? Nsibidi is a sign language. Nsibidi is sign language. And I'm sure there are others, but the one I know about is Nsibidi. So Nsibidi is sign language first. Um, and then from the sign language, it's uh, written. There's writing, Nsibidi writing. But Incibidi itself is, is sign language. It's sign, there's a lot of sign language there. And then there's a lot of them where, with Incibidi, where if you see a certain symbol, you're supposed to do some a specific sign with your body or your hands. There was one sign, it was, it was some kind of spider, and it, the document I read said that if you see this document, you're supposed to hold your hand like this and go like that so that people know you understand Incibidi. And then from there, they'll know you're a Nekbe, and then from there, you guys can go about doing what you want to do. Igbo speaking is 18 million. Kwahili speaking is 200 million. Okay, I'm done. That's whatever. Uh, my friend is Hungarian, and I believe it's another language isolate. Yes, it is. Uh, but many have been influenced by few other Asian languages. Snapple and Cat, if you want to elaborate on the Asian thing, that's kind of interesting. Uh... How do you address the tones when teaching Igbo? Very good, very good to do. I actually want to take Igbo too. Cause like, 
we've had students come in and they come out and now they speak better Igbo than I do. And that doesn't even make any sense. So what we do with Igbo 2 is that we teach the very simple fact that, sorry, when it comes to African languages, or not I'm just African, like, you know, them people, right? When it comes to, you know, the Kwa language family, we speak in a fashion that is similar to or what an English speaker would recognize as singing, right? So if you try to teach it as this is the uptone, this is the downtone, this is it's not going to work, right? But if you tell somebody to sing it the way I sang it, they'll nail it, right? Why? Because in for an English speaker, we know that if I'm try, I know that if I'm trying to sing a song, I'm going to say the words that the person is saying. I'm also going to say it in the rhythm that they said it. So paying attention to that rhythm, the tone thing will come naturally. My name is You can say right? You've said the sounds, but you didn't get the tones. You have to sing the rhythm. You understand, right? Derek, duru, So we just tell them like one of the things we did, we had like a pronunciation boot camp a week ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. And what we did in the boot camp was what, one of the things they did was we teach the humming technique, which is when you hear a new word, either hum it with your mouth or hum it in your head and then say it with the rhythm. If you can understand that the Igbo language is sung, you sing the Igbo language, you'll do well. When I'm in a good mood, I'm in a pretty good mood right now. My pronunciation is great. I can sing. If I'm, if you're catching me and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I don't have the spirit of the language, if I don't have the Igbo spirit, you know, uh, gingering me at the time, I'm going to be pronouncing things like Onye Beke. So um, as of right now, if you throw something at me, I'll say it perfectly. Um, it, it, catch me on the wrong day, I won't. You understand why? Because I know that you have to sing the thing and sometimes I don't feel like singing, right? Like, <laughs> Uh, Amadio has the enforcer. I think it's Ekwensu. Both of them, they're interchangeable. Um, is there a spirit among the Igbo people that is regarded as the enforcer of the land? Um, any male uh, spirit, Abara, is going to be an enforcer or have an enforcing um, ability or attribute. And then from there, different communities will have different names for that masculine power. Right. Um, if you there's a concept of all four, not ugu. So everybody receives the all four, which are those laws. And then there's ugu, the thing that enforces those laws. If you follow the rules, it opens the door for you. If you don't follow the rules, it closes the door for you. The ugu element is going to go by different names in different places. Some people will call it ekwensu. Some people will call it amadioha. Some people will call it udo. Some people will call it. Um, I'm trying to think of another one. Ekwensu amadioha igwe. Some people call it Kamalu. Some people call it Anyamu, right? Some people will call it, I'm trying to, think of, trying to get all of them. Uh, yeah, just okay, fine. That's not, that, that should be enough, right? So they're all going to have different names, but typically they're going to be male. And they're going to be the enforcer, right? That kind of thing, right? Uh, he likes, why now? Yeah, he said 200, oh, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. Uh, 29 viewers, two likes. What, man, I should just shut this whole thing off talking about, man. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, wait. I'm seeing 24 likes. I don't know if your screen is different. I was going to say two likes. I'm going to shut this whole thing off. 33 people in here, 24 likes. Those of you that are holding on to your like button, look, I don't know what I did to you. I'm a nice guy. I don't cause problems. Go ahead and hit the like button, right? I'm not your enemy. We don't have beef. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Right? Now I know why Dr. Umar repeats himself. <laughs> Hit the like button. It helps the channel, right? That's the, the the most basic thing you can do to help the channel is to hit the like button. Unless you don't like it, then that's fine. <laughs> if you don't like what's going on right now, I, it's fine. Then you don't have to hit the like button. Now, don't make me make you lie. Oh, wait. Don't let me make you lie. Insibidi is sign language. Cool. High life. Heart, heart, heart. Yes. Um, even though the spirit is largely demonized in Ghana due to colonization, learn about a spirit called, um, I can't pronounce that, and this spirit pre-colonial era was regarded as the enforcer of the land. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. There you go. Um, it makes sense. Um, I want to see if there's a spirit similar to Igbo. Yeah, there's many of them. There's many of them. So, or it goes by many names, but it's the same thing. Right. Um, every, there's every, the main 
Ambara that people interact with are the female ones, the, fe the feminine ones, right? And then she is going to have a consort, we call it consort, she's going to have a husband. And her husband is going to be um, Scotty, what you're describing, um, the Ogun element, the one that opens the door if you're doing, if you're following her accord, the one that closes the door if you're not, that kind of thing. So, Ndewo, Yavu, Chimoge, hey! Chimoge's comments in the house, one naked uki ide, huh? Iripole? Chimoge is the, hey, let's give Chimoge a round of applause. Chimoge is the first person to graduate from Igbo 3. He is the first person to graduate from Igbo 3. And I don't teach Igbo 3, but every now and then I'll listen in on what's going on. If you hear the level, the 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 gravitas that Chimoge uses to speak Igbo, you'll, you'll be amazed. So everybody give Chimoge a round of applause. It's somebody who grew up completely in America and is speaking this thing like... Um, so <laughs> shout out to Chimoge. Hungarian isn't Indo-European. Hungarians are people called Mygars. They migrated into Europe from Eurasian steppe. Yes. Um, integrated with the local population. Yeah, I think I've heard something like that. Yes. Everybody's saying <laughs> uh, yes, I'm laughing because Chimoge, this Chimoge in his OG dialect. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, perfect, it's good. Uh Amen on one them, Amen on the mean. Uh-huh. Odumma, Odumma. Yes. I I have a strong feeling that in three years Chimoge will not be speaking English anymore. They'll have to like uh his kids will have to go to like uh Igbo e e e e e e e English language learning program. <laughs> you know, because I I doubt there will be any English in his household. Um how I saw the word Ambara, you're about coupled uh translates as, wait, what? Oh, I saw the word Abara in Yoruba a couple of weeks ago. And it got translated as power. Yeah, the word Abara, um, that's what it's referring to. That's what it's referring to, is the powers. So, yeah, it's not that. It's always non Nigerians and me that can see these very obvious connections. And you go to Nigeria, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> It's always the my patrons or subscribers that are that didn't grow up in Nigeria come like, hey, this thing is the exact same, and I don't even know why I'll act like it's different. And I'll go, I know, but they think it's different. So eventually they'll they'll catch up. You understand? But yes, Abara is referring to power. The root word is ba. Ba is like um again hard to translate, but um okay, ba is is making something do the thing it exists to do, right? So Iba ball gets translated as play ball because the ball exists to be played, right? Ibuegu is uh play music, right? To because the music exists to be played, right? So get translated as played, um, that kind of thing, or to play, like to activate, to make the thing do. Abara, like the and then abara is something that perpetually buzz. <laughs> something that perpetually does, something that perpetually activates. There was this guy, he has a, he has a YouTube channel. Um, I would promote him, but he decided to just be a big ass hater. So like his loss, but it's a great YouTube channel. So once he calms down, I'll, I'll promote him. But um, he, he does, a, he, he broke it down very well. He said that like, um, you know, like, an, like the sun is an abara. It's something that perpetually has a power that it just perpetually offers this power right and it's a perpetual energy a perpetual energy building blocks of nature if you go to the different abara you'll see that's what they are right so um but i agree with them and so yeah abara being translated as power being power in your makes perfect sense that's what it means understand the powers the abara the powers on them but um <laughs> At this point, I don't see the two as, like, I really don't see the two as different cultures, right? I don't. I don't, like, from, like, where we're calling Igbo land now all the way to, like, let's call it Ghana and a little bit beyond. It's the same damn people. It's the same people doing the same thing. So, I don't know. They think they're so exotic, you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's politics, yes. It's clear that Yoruba and Igbo languages are related. Yeah, it's very, very, very clear. Yeah, so... Uh, commoner are doing plain to see, yes, I guess. 
Etymology always makes concepts click. Listen, listen, listen. There's a reason why I said, okay, the next thing I need to do is have an Igbo language school. When you understand the language, a lot of these concepts start jumping out by themselves, or you'll have a different approach to them, or you'll understand what's really being said. You understand. I can tell you in English all day that abara is power, but if you understand what you're hearing, abara, I'm mean, not even saying it with the right tone, abara. I can tell you that abara is power, right, all day, and you can say, okay, sure, but this, the word says it plain and clear. And then you go to your valet and you hear something, okay, yeah, duh, that's that, you know, that kind of thing. It makes things a lot more clear. Our ancestors embedded their knowledge in the language itself, which is why everyone should sign up for Gedu. Hey! <laughs> Let me put the link here. www.gedu.me. Igbo language school. Um, I'm going to actually pin it to the top. So Gedu is an Igbo language school. Um, if you want to really understand um, your ancestors on that level, it's there, you're going to hit a wall without the language. And once you get behind that wall, things start to change. Things start to look different. Things start to move different. You begin seeing things in a different way, right? Um, and so... Uh, sign up www.kedu.me um, and the thing is I don't like I didn't want Kedu to be like a, a dog is in Keta a cat is Busu right and I wanted the, whoever is teaching to be able to talk to you the way I'm talking right to be able to explain things in depth so I don't play around with the people we call teachers you understand I don't play around with that thing at all right because I'm very why well, I'm very excited for our next Ibo 1 and Ibo 2 teacher but um, once you begin to explain, understand the etymology of these things, it starts just, it becomes obvious. It starts jumping out. It's easy. It's like, oh, okay, duh. You know, okay, okay, like creation. Okay, duh. It's what the word literally says, that kind of thing. So sign up, sign up, sign up. Yeah, we don't do dog isn't get that. You go figure out what dog is. <laughs> True, you man, the way perfect integrates ads into the live stream. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> Integrate that ad, man. Just, just, just weave that thing in there, right? <laughs> I'll do it, but yeah. So it's not a dog is in Keta Igbo. There's lots of dog is in Keta Igbo language programs out there, and um, you know, you only get so far. For example, right? Actually, no. I'll I'll say that for another live stream. But it kind of goes into why I had to make this video explaining what Giri Giri Bu Ugueze is, right? There's a wall you're going to hit. And this is for anybody who, like, even understands Igbo language. There's a wall you're going to hit if you do not understand and appreciate or deny Igbo, Igbo cosmology. You're not going to understand all, what these words are. You're only going to hear this means that. Okay, bet, go. Once you understand why that means that, you go, oh, okay. Then you start, all of a sudden, things start jumping out. You piece things together more easily. One of the things we do, we do this with Igbo 1, where... The last, this this time around, we typically save this for Igbo 2, but I, I said, let me do it now. This last time with Igbo 1, I was read, I would read like um, a book, Efuru. I wish I can, oh, I can't reach it. Efuru. If anybody knows Efuru, it's an amazing book. But I would read um, like a, a, a sentence in Efuru. And the Igbo 1, like Igbo 1 people, they've never heard Igbo before, or like they just don't know how to speak, that kind of thing. And they would translate what I'm saying into Igbo. And everybody was shocked at how much they were able to do because we give you the mechanics, the core. So, on them. Um, and you cannot know the mechanics and the core without knowing the things I discuss on this channel. Right? And you don't have to know it from me. You can go get a book. You can, there's other channels, that kind of thing. But if you know those things, you learn the language way quicker. Right? Um, whenever people come in, they always tell, like, say what their motivation is. And I've come to find that people that say it's like spirituality or that kind of thing, they usually go further and they learn quicker, right? And this doesn't mean that they're smarter or anything like that. But like, if that's, if you keep your eye on that, it's like, oh, okay, that's why that is that. That's why that's that. Okay. I'm talking too much, but oh yeah. Uh, next African language I need to learn is Efik. Yes. So that I can talk to my grandfather and his people when I eventually find them. Hey, I, Chimoge, I believe you can do it. So power to you, power to you. Um, I don't know if you knew, but um, uh, Chimoge, if you know Chimeze, Chimeze is half ethic. You understand? Chimeze is half ethic. His mom is ethic. So um, if you guys are still in communication, you can reach out to him, see if he can help you. So I went to Harvard, by the way. Kedu taught me more than Harvard. <laughs> he said, where's the thing? Hey, he said, hey, I'll do my. 
Hey, I said I can do ka <laughs> Harvard, no one can. Oh yeah. Uh, most Bantu languages are tonal as well. They tend to have longer words, um, unlike West African languages, because inoculation, cool. I can't say that word. Uh, sorry for linguistic jargon. It's all good personal. That's all super. I'm like really, really interested in linguistics, so I appreciate that. But all right, guys, looks like the questions have ran out. Uh, at this point, I'm 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 just indulging. So. I'm happy on them. All right. So as always, the best way to support the channel is to get in the patron or to get in the patron to get on pa the Patreon at patreon.com slash the medicine shell and join our Patreon community. Um, patrons have full access to my library. So like the, what I read to research and prepare my videos and know what I know and that kind of thing, I make it available to everybody. It's over 300 plus uh, documents, books, short articles, things like that are all in there. Um, lately, people have been sending me things to add too. So shout out to everybody who's doing that. Um, so things that you're really not gonna find anywhere else, especially in that volume and organized, like if you go to recommended folder, it says, this is where to start. After that, read this, after that, read this, read this, read this here. By the time you've read two of them, you're, phew, you're gonna be good. So it's got books and everything in there. It's at all levels, patrons have access to it. Um, you also have access to the Odinani calendar. I was getting um, heat from the patrons because I hadn't updated the meanings of the moons and things like that. Um, so right now the market days have been updated. So if you go to the market days, if you go to like, for example, I can't look and see what day it is today. But I know it's not, okay, anyways. Let's say today's Afal, I'm not 100% sure. You click Afal, it's gonna tell you the meaning of Afal. It's gonna tell you what observances, like what things are done on this day. It's gonna tell you what this day is associated with. So the day Afal is associated with Anna, the earth. It's associated with Igwe, the sky, um, that kind of thing. Um, and it's gonna also tell you, so like if that's the day you were born, you'll know like all the things that come in that, that are associated with your creation, that kind of thing, right? So. And then the moons, I'll have the moons done uh, this weekend, but it also explains the new moon and things to do and what it means and that kind of thing coming this weekend. So uh, join the Patreon community at patreon.com slash the medicine shell. Um, what else? Then if you're interested in learning Igbo language, I mean, I've talked your ear off about Kedu, but go ahead and sign up at www.kedu.me. Hold on, wait. I think March, this spring... It's going to be our biggest class yet. And I'm going to be, for that reason, I'm going to be upping the quality level on a lot of different things um, and things like that. So anybody who has ideas on how to make the program even better, send me a message. I've been reaching out to some of you. Hey, how can we make this thing better? Hey, how can we make this experience better? So keep them coming, keep them coming. Everybody who's contributing. That being said, Paburi. Hi, Udochi. That's why Udochi has the... Uh, <laughs> That's why Udochi has the offer of, of, of moderating. <laughs> Udochi, thank you for that. Tabu Uriye. So today is Uriye. Uriye me. Uriye nenyendo. Uh -huh. Let's give her her dedications. Tabu Uriye. Uriye me. Uriye nenyendo. Uriye na sachobi. Na sachamado. Na sachowa. Asena enwegi wanonowa. Na bugi muriye. The awful of moderation. As always, guys, get on the Patreon. Let's hang out on the Patreon. Um, get in, get into Kedu if you're trying to learn the language. I'm gonna be, I'm trying to work on t-shirts. I'm too much of a perfectionist. I've been working on it for like two years. And I'm like, for some reason, I'm so perfectionisty about the t-shirts that it's taken me forever to be like, okay, this is good enough. Let it go, you know? So, um, but we have uh, shirts coming out very soon um, and other things. So just stay tuned, uh, keep subscribing. I got 30 likes and 30 people in here. So perfect, perfect, right? Perfect. Hey, oh yeah, as always, I'm well. He said, "All right, guys, catch you for now."